how much do you think you are out of pocket all in um, from online scams? Uh, let's let's call it online dating. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's a hundred percent scam. Okay, probably there's a few innocent souls out there who gen genuinely want to find their guy. But you know, 25k is a good round number to to just talk about. Uh, probably maybe slightly more. Uh, this is our headliner, I would call him. Uh, Michael is a, an American attorney and a brave soul, willing to bear it all, um, to pay it forward, to help his fellow man, you guys who are currently caught by the leg hole trap of mail order bride scams. So without further ado, um, let's say hi to Michael. Now, I, I have him listed as, well, we'll let him do the talking. Hello, Michael. Hey, Joe. Good to see you. Yeah, hey. great to meet you. Yeah, yeah. Like we met, right? Yeah, we've talked on the phone, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. First, yeah. first video, Skype, for sure. First, first video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, thank you very much for coming on and being so yeah. brave to, to talk about, uh, you know, none of us guys want to admit that we were a victim of this ugly $3 billion a year industry, but the truth is it really helps um, our fellow men to understand what's going on for them. I agree. I think it's a little, it's a little embarrassing sometimes to say, wow, they got me too. I thought I was smart. I thought I was intelligent, but Jesus, look what happened. You know, there are times in a guy's life where you're kind of vulnerable, a long-term relationship fails. You come out of a long-term marriage, a divorce, uh, want to try something new and different, and maybe you're not quite thinking in the same mode that you normally do and you you, you get sucked into what i call the vortex <laughs> and before you know it money's gone your heart's hurt uh maybe some trips under your belt but um you know there's warning signs if if you just use your head the, the proper head to think with then you can get there yeah yeah well well said. So, Michael, can you share how, how did it all start for you? Maybe start at the beginning. OK, um, I had a, a, an 18-year marriage fail. And I'm not putting blame on anybody. Everybody kind of owns their stuff in that. And we did pretty good with that. In fact, I say good things now about it. We get along better now than we ever did as spouses. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so you come out of that and you're a little disillusioned with what's going on in your community. That the dating options there and, and you kind of want to go somewhere different and you think why not and god when i was a 20 something attorney late 20s there was a magazine published and it was uh russian women in print mind you print and i remembered that and i said hey i wonder if that's still going on and it apparently is going on in space so i got online did some google search and found some sites and um the rest is is kind of history as they say like they pop up real quick in a Google search if you search for a Slavic woman to date or marry or travel companion, whatever. It pops right up. So, yeah. And, and the uh, let's face it, uh, the, some of the women are absolutely breathtakingly beautiful, and um, you just you just get drawn right in, for good or bad. Yeah. So so, what can I tell you? How do you want to share this? What's what's the uh, What's the best way to move forward from where you sit? Um, for well, maybe maybe um, how much do you think you are out of pocket all in um, from online scams? Uh, let's let's call it online dating. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure it's a hundred percent scam. Okay, probably there's a few innocent souls out there who gen genuinely want to find their guy. But you know, twenty five k is a good round number to to just talk about. Uh, probably maybe slightly more, not much more. But yeah, I've, I've grown cautious, if that makes and, sense. And over that 25,000, you spent it over what period of time, just so we can um, You know, three, four years, most of it a couple of years ago when I was actively chatting and going to Ukraine and just wow and did some vacations and stuff. So yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's all very doable if you want to go there and try that, but you need guidance. You really do. If you're just a guy trying it on your own, you're probably, you might get lucky and find that one, you know, diamond in the rough, but chances are you'll just kind of get caught up in, in the game is what I called it. But yeah, um, I'll tell you, you know, there was a girl off of one of the sites. It's not one of the premier sites. It's one of the lesser sites. 
um, beautiful and one of the prettier girls on that side. And so I sent her some chats. We chatted online and this was a direct messaging system. And then, uh, I don't know, a week or two later, I gave her my phone. She called me. She was fluent in English. And I don't know if guys have told you, sometimes when a Ukrainian or Russian girl speaks English with that accent going, it, 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 it just kind of sometimes melts you. And stunning, beautiful. And we talked a bit. And then I, uh, I don't know, a couple months later, I booked a flight to Ukraine to go meet her. And, um, you know, she said she had to travel from the occupied area in those years. And it wasn't that safe. Could she bring a friend? I'm like, sure, I don't care. Um, okay, we need to get places to stay. And I got separate places because I hadn't met her. I didn't want to go down that path yet. I had to send money ahead, right, for her travel. Makes sense. Um, and she had to bring her friend to be safe. Okay, that How much did you send her? How much did you send her? Uh, in those days, I sent her about $500 for her travel and the flat. What year was that? 2017. Okay. Yeah, and it was a train, apparently. Mm -hmm. um, and <laughs> funny story, the first time I flew to Ukraine, uh, I think I was, I was going to go to Odessa, but eventually go to Kiev, and I tried to book the train because it was fairly inexpensive. And um, I got online to the schedule and booked it, and I got a confirmation. It was a different day and a different time. And they're like, they're like, there's no train that day. Schedule doesn't matter. We go when we go. You go this day, or you don't take our train. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'll I'll fly, you know. But uh, but yeah, that was about five hundred dollars, and um, in those days for her train and that, and and you know we were going to meet say on a Friday. I was at a flat around the corner down the block from where they were. And, and Joe, I'll tell you, you know, I, I got dressed and I had read that you need to dress. You don't have to dress in a coat and tie, but you need to look sharp. You need to yeah. have a collar, pressed, good shoes. Um, and, and so I did. I, and I came out the door to the street in Keith and literally ran right into her. This drop dig gorgeous blonde in a white sundress and flats. And the second I laid eyes on her, I was like, oh my God, she's real. And her friend was there. And, you know, we, we had a wonderful first evening and dinner and laugh. And I thought, wow, this is something. And um, it went a little late. And apparently liquor stores close early in Kiev. I don't know. But if you know people and you go behind the liquor store, you can still get liquor or something. <laughs> I said, I don't know anything about this. I'm a tourist. I'm just going to call it. And you, you ladies had get home safe. You're around the corner. And then the next day she kind of ghosted me and I was real puzzled and I was texting her and her friend. And I was like, what is this? Then I got a message. Oh, she's sick. She had to see the doctor. Can you send some money? I'm like, what? I thought, would you have a massive hangover or something? You know, throw up all night. I don't know. And I went, and because I, I couldn't get a hold of her all day, I'd already booked a flight out. I'm like, okay, I, I just got ghosted. There's no need to hang out here. And, but I did walk over to their flat and she was in bed looking kind of pale. And apparently I didn't know if it, doctors come to patients in, in Ukraine, I guess. That's what yeah, they, they, do. Do. yeah. they do. Okay. Cause you know, I'm Western. I don't know anything about this. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like thinking that's a crock. But anyway, apparently they do. And so they asked me for some money to pay the doctor because they had no money to get whatever. So I gave them like $200 and said, you know, I had a great night, but you ghosted me. I'm flying out tomorrow. But we communicated and I said, let's vacation. Come on. So we went over uh, to the Dominican. Not too long that. And of course, she said, can my friend come? I don't want to travel alone. It's scary. I'm like, what? Again? Okay, fine. You know, and um, I don't Can I just know. watch you there, Michael? I'm just following your story. So you met this girl. Now you're going, taking her to Dominican Republic for a vacation. So you, how long did you chat with her online before you went to meet up with her in Kiev? Uh, two, three months. It wasn't months? constant. Okay. It was, uh, actually it was by cell phone because she, we had exchanged contacts. And you know, and that's one of the tips I learned later on. If, if the communication is sporadic, there's probably something going on. You know, if, if they're not responding quick or yeah. if the messages don't follow a logical trail day in and day out, like they're forgetting what you talked about, mm -hmm. they try to track 
what's going on with the different guys in their lives. Yeah. But yeah, but we went to Dominican for a week and uh, oddly enough, I, I don't know what it is about flying Ukrainian women to different places, but because of visa issues and transit visas, they tend to fly these kind of obscure routes to go from point A to B sometimes. But she had to arrive a day or two early, so I had to send money for all of that. They went, they were there. We had a great week at the resort and you know, I, th I thought she was the one, really, I'm not kidding. And um, we did a lot of stuff and their flights back were a day or two later. So they stayed later than me. I had to come back and work. But all that being said, she got back, I got back, we communicated. And um, I said, hey, I'd like you to come to the United States. And she's like, well, I haven't been. And I knew she didn't have a visa, but um, I didn't want to do the K-1 visa yet. I wanted to see how I lived and see that if, if that agrees with her, then I would just do it while she's here or something. That was the thought in my head, right? And I wasn't listening to what was really going on because if you message her and there's two or three days of silence, you're like, what's all this? And um, so she said, well, Michael, I'll need some money for this. You know, uh, I need to get a new biometric passport. I need to get a visa. I need to travel and stuff. And um, apparently there were some extra fees on the visa, um, quite a bit. And quite a bit of extra fees? Yes. On the visa? yes. How much? Yeah. Well, to, for her to come here to the US, travel included and all the other stuff, it was about eight grand. $8,000? Yeah, seven or eight grand, yeah. For what? You know, in your mind, you rationalize this. It's Ukraine. Anything can happen over there. I'm not sure what it's all about. I looked up. I mean, I know a passport's a couple hundred dollars. The visa application's a few hundred dollars. I knew the travel could be one or two grand, just depending on the trains and the flights. But uh, she just said the rest are fees. $8,000. I heard you right. Yeah. You did. It was seven or eight. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought, and again, what you'll find yourself doing when you're in this zone is you just keep re-rationalizing. Yeah. Because you want it to be true. You yeah. really want this to be real. And uh, yeah. yeah, I know. Sometimes you learn and you're in a you're in a spot where you want it to be real and you know, you sure you send it. And and just to cut to the the, the end of this, so she was gonna come. I flew, I was flying to New York to get her, had the house decorated, right? If you want to get bonus points, just carry flowers around through U.S. airports. All the flight attendants will do anything they can to help you. <laughs> you know, I mean, you get bonus points right and left. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, and, and there's a classic thing. Don't show up to meet your girl without flowers. And uh, so I was at JFK in New York waiting on her. And everybody down in Terminal 7, you could tell who was picking up Russian Ukrainian girls because they all had flowers. Every one of them. To the man. And um, but he's kind of nodded. And then, but, um, but yeah, you live and learn. So I waited about four hours and uh, nothing, crickets. That flight had landed, deplaned, and probably left. And um, so uh, I just kind of gave my flowers to one of the women who worked there in the airport and said, here, have a good night. Went over to my gate and flew home. And um, got on the plane to fly home and it didn't leave the gate and it didn't leave the gate. And I was like, God, can we just go home? I've had it with this trip. And they, the, I don't know, the head lead flight attendant came by and said, you booked a double ticket and the seat beside you is empty. Are we waiting for this person or not? And I just looked at her and said, nah. And for about three days before this trip, total silence, didn't respond to anything. Three days after the trip, nothing. And um, and then finally she comes out of the woodwork and says, hey, we were accosted by bandits in Kiev. They got everything and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I, I'm not buying it. Really accosted, you know. And um, so, and I was like, well, you know, at that point I was done believing the story. I, enough had happened that I realized no matter how much you want something to be true, there's too many alarms that you ignored. And it was funny. I said, well, you know, I'll go ahead and report the lost passport to the embassy. Uh, and she went ballistic. And I said, well, it's got a, a visa with your name in it. 
you're connected to me by all these messages, all these flight reservations, hotels and trips. If a evil person shows up on our shore, does commits crimes, they're going to come knocking on my door. And uh, she went ballistic and mysteriously within 24 hours, she had her passport in her hand. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess the point of it is really, no matter how much you want something to be true, there's always warning signs. And, and you really just got to put your heart aside and listen to them. And as long as you learn and move forward and don't repeat, you know, it, it's okay. And if, if my story helps even one guy out there just double check something before opening his wallet or his heart, you know, it was worth sharing, you know, lesson learned here. Otherwise, people do bad, dumb things sometimes. I've heard, I've heard a lot of scam stories, but um, rarely one that follows right through to a left, you know, left at the airport. At the airport. Well, that's, it gets a little that's better. Hard. That's it hard. gets a little better because she, she sent me some photos and it didn't quite look like her anymore. I'm not stupid. I know what she looked like. So I kind of figured out where the money went. Okay. You don't understand what I'm saying? No. Spell it out for me. Spell it out for me. She looked a little better than she looked before. As in she visited somebody to get a little enhancements. Oh, geez. She got fake boobs. Boobs or what? Well, she she was already pretty, but uh Yeah. 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 She was she was she was definitely different in the photos. And I was just like, okay, I wish you well. Glad I could help. <laughs> you know. I don't, I, I don't know where the money went, but she did look different. Uh -huh. So you saw in the pictures. Yeah. Well, that's enough money to get uh, a boob job. That's for that sure. I don't know. But mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah. But yeah. Well, so let me, let me ask you, Michael. Um, sure. So the thing is, the reason we're doing this scam school is because let me share with all of you guys a little bit for, um, for, Almost four years, I did a free uh, scam check service. Mm -hmm. And so it was one on one, individual guys would say, Hey, this girl, I think she, I don't know, I don't feel maybe she's scamming me. Can you help me? Can you check her out for me? And every single time, I mean, 99.99% .99 of the time, okay. And we did hundreds and hundreds of these. And each one, it's a lot of time and effort. And the way they always end up is it, it's a girl from Anastasia or Charm Date or one of the notorious scam by design sites. And so we know it's a scam, but right. we have to walk through the process and we check social media. We do reverse image search. Usually that's the most, you know, you, you see her photo on many mm -hmm. other websites, scam sites. Because right? especially if she's one of the top beauties, if she's, if she's a nine or a 10, she's splattered all over the Internet on all of these uh, scam sites that share. A lot of it is identity fraud. The girl goes in for a free photo shoot. She's young yeah. you know, and not so worldly. And they just, <laughs> she finds maybe years later, her photo plastered all over the place. She knows nothing about it. She just went in for a free photo shoot and she joined the agency and uh, that, that was it, that's all. So she's a victim of identity fraud. Okay, here's here's just a pre-recorded video just to see if it'll stop the glitching. Um, a guy that was sadly scammed. Interesting story. I'll be right back hopefully with Michael. I got a few interesting questions for you.
we're back. Okay. We're back. All right. So, guys, just a little bit about Steve. So, you see, most people think that it's the um, us older gentlemen that only get scammed. But no, there's a young, very handsome. His 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 pipes were the size of my legs. I met Steve in Odessa, and he was scammed. Mm -hmm. about 26 grand and you can see the lady that scammed him and man he's handsome engineer great job um i mean he could pick up almost any girl he wants but he was hooked on this one girl and my wife and i you know he came to our flat in odessa and we just you know it took a full counseling multiple sessions to get him to realize listen break out of it buddy it's not happening you know she's just taking yeah. the clean and he met with her multiple times oh, wow you know, I, you know that's mm -hmm. not, yeah yeah so guys whatever you think or don't think of scam victims um highly intelligent people you know i i'm i i i have a a uh, heart surgeon uh, that was scammed uh there you go michael attorney lawyers i, I, I mean, engineers uh, bankers um yeah. you've seen this this business guy scammed by uh valentine mm -hmm. For three hundred and seventeen thousand, we played earlier in the stream. Yeah, I don't feel so bad now. Yeah, exactly. It's it's really it's part of a an old boys club that we need to stick together and support each other. We we not fee, not need to feel shame. We need to be empowered to, you know, to make a difference to speak up because it's only through these voices um that we're going to make any dent in this ugly three billion dollar year scam industry we've got to stand up and be heard and that's what this industry they count on us with slithering away and just quiet i don't want to tell the world i was an idiot you know they count on that and they pray and they continue to pray on that yeah sure like i said you find yourself in a transitional period and otherwise yep. smart people do less than intelligent things yeah. And you want something to be true and you keep re-rationalizing their behavior in your head. And then you say, well, it's a different culture. Maybe that's how it's done there. And the bottom line is your own common sense will guide you through it. If you just listen, you know, and, uh, yeah. And, and save your money and some heartache. Yeah. You know? Let me ask you a, sure. a bold, direct question. My, my Absolutely. Question. Do you feel this story you told us? You went, you went to Kiev. You met with her. You had some dating with her. Then you um, took her to Dominican Republic. Had a great vacation, and then invited her to the states. And then she got you to send or ask you to send eight thousand dollars for I don't know <laughs> just expenses. Do you feel? My question is: Do you feel you were scammed? Do I feel I was scammed? Yeah, I mean, I it had. I feel she just used me for money for whatever her purpose was, whatever that was. It could have been whatever she wanted the money for. I don't think she felt the same. I think she liked me for sure. Just not the way that I wanted her to and not the way I liked her. And um, like I said, I could keep, I've thought about leading into today's talk, like, you know, what in the hell was I thinking? Mm -hmm. And um, I, you know, I just think I wanted something to be real. And I thought I was in love with the girl that was, that just did it for me. And the reality was not so much now, you know? So yeah, I, I, I think she wanted the money for something and whatever that was, I'll never know, but she did so, different in the photos. So counselor. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Do you feel, Am I charging you now? Did you say yeah, you know, the question, yeah. Approach the bench. <laughs> Do you feel you were scammed? Yeah. yeah. What's that now? Do you feel you were scammed? Yeah. Yeah. I feel, yeah. So I, I'm, I'm leading you on here. It's your, opportunity. You. Uh, it's your opportunity to call out who you feel scammed you just in a public forum. I'm just, hear it, you. It's your choice. Do you want to or no? Yeah, I previously declined that offer. Um, being, you know, being an attorney, doing those things, I'm, I'm not going to do the naming and I'm not going to provide, provide photographs. The story's real. I promise you that. Yeah. If I'm ever questioned on that, the story's real. But I'm um, not to uh, go down that path with you. Okay. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely. 20 years the on only the reason, um, Michael, just in my own defense, the only reason I'm asking this hard question that I knew the answer to, because we spoke on the phone briefly last night, is I want to ask you, it, it's really my question, and I think a lot of viewers have this question, since you are an attorney, why 
why do we have to be um, intimidated and afraid as a victim? Yeah, as a victim of a, of, of a big, uh, like this isn't a summary, uh, like this is not small claims court. This is, um, <laughs> in, in yeah, Canada, yeah. this would be invitable, yeah? But why, why do we have to be afraid of saying, yes, I was a victim and this is my perpetrator? Why do we have well, to be afraid? Yeah, to be clear, I, I can't speak for other people. I don't think I was a victim. I think I was just stupid. And um, bottom line. Um, and then, um, you know, as a lawyer, I know people bring causes of action for the stupidest stuff in the world. And um, so um, I, I'm not going to go down that path, my friend. Um, just the story's real and the girl's real. Uh, the, the name of the website uh, it's already been mentioned, not by me though. How's that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm just um, everybody's wondering, as as I'm still wondering, is you know, as an attorney, can you can you just explain why not only you, but why other people would be afraid of being sued um, for calling somebody out? <laughs> why? Oh my God! People sue in this country over nothing every day. Mm -hmm. um, and you take a uh, billion dollar industry and somebody's maligning them and calling them out with their actors by name, location, site. My God, yeah. Think, think of a war chest that they could amass to torment you and shut you up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and you know, you just, I'm just thinking very practically. I have so many people that come in and they say that, you know, I want to file this suit, it's on principle. And I'll say, well, in my experience, your principles evaporate at about 5,000 in billable hours. So what's it really about? <laughs> you know, seriously. Yeah. So, I mean, that's what in my experience. So I would say that, uh, you know, I don't think anybody do anything, but I'm not going to go down that path where I leave myself personally open for some kind of weird attack from a very, very wealthy industry. Mm -hmm. um, just honestly, you know. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. And, and I just kind of want to bring, I want to bring this yeah. topic up because a lot of guys ask me all the time, why, how is this possible in this advanced era, you know, the, the 2020s, that this shit can go on and nobody's held, held accountable. And it's one of those few industries that I'm aware of that, you know, this free for all just continues to happen forever. Okay. And there's no accountability whatsoever. There's no governing body in this, in this industry. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, no you have to get a consumer protection action or, or an attorney general mm -hmm. interested in it. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think they'd have too much interest in this unless so many people came out of the woodwork. But, yeah, it's a it's a thorny issue. And it's what I said. I think I was just in a bad spot emotionally, stupid, got taken yeah. advantage of. And you live and learn that lesson. It's a it's a, can be. It's not as expensive as the guy that got 300,000, my God, but uh, yeah, but yeah, I learned it for sure. So I just wanted, I just wanted to ask you as well, Michael, um, I want to share a story. What happened to me uh, about three years, mm, no, about four years ago. No, it had been four and a half years ago, I guess. <laughs> Time slips away. Um, so when I started doing these scam um checks i started getting a lot of these guys um coming out of the woodwork telling me their scam stories yeah. and as a result i got this one very long email one day and it ended with it's it's two was brothers and they both were scammed by anastasia date allegedly yeah and what happened was it was so bad for his brother and mm -hmm. his brother took it so hard right and as I recall, she uh, no showed him at the airport in, in Kiev. And this is going way back. But anyway, the story ends that he flew home, he took his uh, gun and offed himself. And so when that happened to me, that shook me to the core. I, I, I got on the phone with him. I was able, I, I, ch I had to chase him, but mm -hmm. I finally got on the phone to verify. I mean, he, he, he bawled on phone to me. Yeah, he lost his brother. And, yeah, yeah. And when this happened, I just went, I can't, I just can't sit idly by and be a good agency and help guys without also taking the opposite position of trying to bring down, you know, Goliath here. 
Well, and so what I did as a result of that, I, I really had a fire in my belly. I was really angry when that happened. I just, so I, um, I did a video announcing a class action lawsuit against Anastasia that not filed by me, but if any, I will help put it together. So if you feel you're scammed by Anastasia and it was a, a significant amount of money and you feel you have substantive proof, Mm -hmm. um, please contact me. So as a result, I still have almost 30 guys um, that are ready to sue on a class action lawsuit, Anastasia. I'm just wondering, what would be your thoughts about that? Do you think it's something? Don Quixote. Pardon me? Don Quixote attacking the windmill. The novel. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think you're attacking the windmill. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to denigrate these people at all. They probably all have tragic stories, probably worse than my own. Um, you got to get class certified. It's a struggle. And then um, you got to prove it. And you're dealing with international law, maybe treaties, maybe not. It's a tough struggle. I mean, if you, 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 you it'd be a tough sell to a law firm because they front the costs. Yeah. I mean, God knows I'd wish you the best and great success in that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you'd end up going to a, a big firm that, you probably have to know somebody that knows somebody <laughs> to really get somebody interested in that. Um, built my first house, got scammed by the builder. Five homes got scammed by the builder. He took all the money, built half houses, ran out of town. I got all the lien holders together. I think the plumbers, the electricians, the roofers. Told them they all had an appointment with the county attorney in downtown. They had no appointment. I marched down there with 60 people. So we mm -hmm. had an appointment. And that's the only way we, and we did, we, we didn't have a point. We got their attention and they indicted the guy and convicted him. But it takes stuff like that. Yeah. So I understand. Well, what about Jack? Call, but I wish Jack, is, Jack is commenting. What about getting the attorney general's office involved? Would they get involved? Well, the attorney general's from a state or the attorney general for that state. And then they have their meetings as like groups of them for the country. If enough people in their state are, that you just have to start knocking on their door and saying, guys, we're getting scammed here. Here's the site. Um, it is up their alley if you can get them interested enough. But remember what I said about the war chest. These guys are, what would you say? They're, they're billion dollar industry? Yeah. Yeah. It's Possibly a multi big nut to crack. Mm -hmm. So um, you, you know, you'd probably spend millions just getting in the door. And you know, I don't know who backs these, the industry. See and, the comment? Do you see the comment? That's who backs them. Oh, okay. Well, if there's actual proof, uh, you might get the, the AG attached if it's organized crime. But it's the foreign. I don't know what it is or not, okay? I'm telling everybody. I have no idea. Thank you, <laughs> whoever's listening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, oh. it's a trip. Oh. I had an attorney, so back back when this started, I had spoken to a New York attorney and he said to me, if you get 100 plaintiffs with substantive evidence, mm -hmm. he said he would file a class action. Yeah, that's a, and he would do it. class of 30. Pardon me? Uh, you probably wouldn't even get certified as a class with 30 plaintiffs. That's why he told you to get 100. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what he said. But true. then I worked hard on this for, yeah, it, it was almost two years when mm -hmm. he, he told me, I just can't do it, Joe. Sorry. He bowed out. Life happens. Yeah. 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 So, um, but yeah, like I said, you just, it is guys, we just learn, you know, learn and move forward. Um, and just, yeah, that's, 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 why, that's why I do these scam schools is, is education is what I figure is the only way, because just to add about the, the class action. So as he said to me, we will, I, I think, with because I explained to him some of the um, headliner uh, cases that we had, like the suicide, yeah, right? right? And he said, uh, I think we have a really good shot at winning this thing. But he says, based on a little bit of digging he's done, because this was uh, Anastasia. He says, I don't think we'll ever collect because I can't find assets anywhere. And he's checked Hong Kong. He's checked Malta. He's checked um, mm -hmm. a number. And he says, yeah, that. So you get a judgment and then you just can't collect. So all of this time and effort and, 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 and here's the big part of it. And I, and I kind of just want to get the world to understand how complicated of a story 
this is and why it's it's my conclusion that it's impossible to slay this dragon. And here's why. Then ultimately you you get it, you, you win the class action, you get a judgment, you, you get a judgment for however, say a hundred million dollars, whatever, you can't collect. And right. then you bury them in social media. Let's say you put a social media push into that. You get CNN in on this and that. And you bury right. the name Anastasia. Well, guess what? They have, Anastasia has at least 18 other Medusa snake heads, otherwise URLs. And they right. just, they're still in business. Okay, you took down the mother name, Anastasia, but they're still in business as, as all of these other website yeah. names. I, I understand the challenge. I totally do. Yeah, and, uh, it seems about impossible. And, and from where I sit, the next best thing anybody can do is to just be very smart about who you talk with, how you communicate and cut it off right away when it gets weird. Like I said, I, th I think probably a small percentage of the ladies on that site are there for the right reason, but they get drowned out by the the other stuff that goes on. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like yeah. any more, you know, mm -hmm. like, for example, the woman, more of an expert than you just heard me. What's that? that? I mean, it's the law of numbers. If you get big enough people together, um, it yeah, won't all be bad. There has to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just not the yeah. intent of the site. Yeah. Yeah. And on um, that note, my wife is going on soon and tell okay. what, happened, what happened to her. But um, yeah, any. Um, oh, you question in. Here, what's the age? How old was your your girl? Twenty year difference. That you. It's a twenty year difference. Twenty years. Okay. Twenty years was the age gap. Yeah, yeah. Any more? So you know, I stick with ten or less because it just doesn't work. Oh my God, age is not a number. Somebody says to me one more time, I want to strangle them. Age is the most relevant thing in a relationship. Age and health. You know. Yeah. Um, like anymore? Yeah, I don't. I, you know the photo. I don't want to tell you. I don't want to tell you age is just a number, but just just one minute, and I'll be right back. They with all you. say that. Oh, don't worry about the. I'm not worried about the age. You know that doesn't. Age doesn't matter at all, and they they'll convince you that it doesn't matter, and they'll keep on until you believe it that it doesn't matter, but it does. I understand that I'm 64 years old, but. Uh, Never got past 20 in my heart, so, you know, I, I still feel young at heart. I've got a lot to offer. You know, I come here looking for an honest relationship, uh, an honest uh, an honest woman, someone who I could relate to, enjoy, and be with, and, and maybe eventually uh, marry and have a, have a family. Uh huh? Can you cut a minute? Okay, sure, sure, sure. I'm getting emotional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was painful. To okay, we're back. Yeah, and the thing, the complicated thing is, Michael, is that like Anna and my wife have a twenty-year age gap, so it's, so it, it's hard for me to sit here and say that's too much, right? But the, the truth is, I caught a unicorn, right? And there has to be some. You did. It's possible. You did. It's possible. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yes, to me, I think you need to. I use the term "fish in the right pond" by virtue of. Your age, your physicality, what you look like, how good your health is. You know, I have no business with the 20 year old drop dead models. Bottom line. I wish it were different. Yeah. But it's not. That's the reality. Um, yeah, you like, said the, I, I use the same term, fish in the right pond, because that's where the rubber meets the road, is you, you've got to fish. And frankly yeah. speaking, you're better off to, well, maybe not now, but go to Kiev and just hang out and meet girls in the coffee shop, right? I have a friend that, picks up girls at McDonald's. But I mean, yeah. there's so many beautiful, younger, single <laughs> Ukrainian ladies, and you're a lot better off chance-wise meeting a good girl there than on any of these websites. <laughs> yeah, I often, uh, like they talk about, I wanna meet you, we should do this, and I, I insist on a video chat, which a lot of times won't happen. They, mm -hmm. they just, there's a litany of bizarre reasons why they can't chat and they get crazy. Or they say they're in the U.S., which is common. I really don't know that they are or aren't, but a lot of times I'll ask them, hey, how's the weather today? A temperature holding up? And if they don't think carefully and they're somewhere else in the world, they'll actually get the wrong temperature and weather. 
Um, I say if, if they're in a city like the St. Louis Arch, how's the arch? You've been to it yet? They're like, what's the arch? Or the needle in Seattle? You know, mm -hmm. they say they're there. So you just kind of pick stuff and throw it out there out of the blue. And a lot of times you can find out, um, you know, if you think they're here or not. Some girl told me she was in my town for a barbecue, the international, the national barbecue cook off. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> That's just the worst lie I've heard in a long time. But, uh, but anyway, like I said, you just get a better radar, get tuned into what it is and, Common sense is your best defense to this. I am, um, so, Michael, are you good news? Am I what? I'm sorry? Are you ready for the good news? Uh, yeah, sure. What? You had to really know. think about that. Mm -hmm. Let's, like, let's <laughs> make a deal. Oh, I'm is, the car. <laughs> As you can see it on your screen, um, it tells this story. You get it. it oh, like oh a little wife. ticket down there. Yeah, you got your ticket. No wife, no Hey, so what I'd love to do is uh, book a consultation with you, explain what exactly it is, but it's like it sounds, you pay after you get married, so the onus is on me. Um, and this is yeah. what I'm offering every guy that speaks out and pays it forward. And like I say, I'm endeavoring to not only put a spotlight on what's bad, but help give guys hope. Because it, it takes something extreme like this to give most scam victims hope. Yeah, you got to get past it and just yep. think differently. I agree. Um, you know, I was, I was a, it, I it took it pretty hard in the months following that, you know? Yeah. And uh, because you feel stupid and whatever you thought was real was absolutely not. Yeah. You know, and then, but then again, like I say, you live, you learn, and you pay it forward. I call it karma, you know? I do believe karma's out there, do some good deeds. Protect your own future for nothing else. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, and age matters. Well, for thank most you for of the time, age on. matters. Do what, buddy? Yeah. It, it does matter. It does matter. And and everything has boundaries and borders in life, right? So, yeah. um, do you have an appointment booked with us to go over um, no wife, no pay, or not? I don't at the moment. I do not. Do you so, want? Uh, do you want to book in for that? Not this second. I, I'll talk to you after you're done with work for the day and, yeah, and yeah. helping people and helping guys. And, um, okay. Yeah. You know, if, if you just help one guy from going down the rabbit hole, you, you're successful. Absolutely. Stories yeah. help one guy from one rabbit hole. Absolutely. And this, and this helps hundreds. I yeah. hope maybe in the future thousands. Yeah. We've committed to doing scam school the last Sunday of every month, just so you guys know. Um, mm -hmm. and anybody that wants to speak, yeah, you will get a free pass to no wife, no pay experiment. We'll yeah. see if you qualify though. That's another. Yeah, matter. you should have people uh, type in like the best lie they've heard, you know, from from the chats and stuff. The best lie, like the the famous barbecue cook off that wasn't. I was like, really? Come on, you know, you're in a you're, you're like a prison hotel. They won't let you out because they're making you cook barbecue all day every day. You know. So. <laughs> so thanks for coming on, Michael. Really appreciate it. I yeah. gotta move on to my next guest who's been Absolutely. waiting. Absolutely. Be well. Take yeah, care. Thanks very much. Take care. Everybody, be well.